Hi everyone, welcome to the class about the nuclear chemistry. In the last class we had discussed about the shell model of the nucleus. Today in this video uh, we are going to study about the liquid shock model of the nucleus. Okay. Actually uh, it is a statistical model developed by Niels Bohr, Wheel and Frankel. Okay, uh, in this model we are considering nucleus as a whole. We are not considering the individual nucleon. In the, we know that in the shell model we consider the properties of individual nucleon. They are distribution differentials like that. Here we are considering nucleus as a liquid drop. That is a collection of a large number of particles in a small volume. Okay. And nucleus as a homogeneous entity in which all the particles distributed homogeneously. Like that. That is we are considering, we are comparing the nucleus with the liquid drop. And we know that the interaction force between the nucleons is a short range one. Short range. And it is charge and spin independent. Okay, that is nucleon interact with all the nucleons nearby it. Okay, only the nucleons nearby, that is a nuclear force is only nuclear interaction only short range, that is nucleons interact only with the nucleons nearby nucleons. Therefore, nuclear interaction, nuclear force tend to saturate. The nucleons the, a, nucleo, a, 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 a nucleon never interact with a nucleon away from it. It interacts only with the neighboring nucleons. Okay. Therefore, nuclear interaction tends to saturate. And also, the interaction is charge and spin independent. That, that, that is interaction between proton and proton. And there is interaction between proton and neutron. There is interaction between neutron and neutron. All these interactions are same. Even though there is a Coulombic repulsion also there, but even though there is interaction between proton and proton in a short range. Okay, so like the particles in a, the, like the molecules in a nucleus, the uh, interaction between the nucleons in a, uh, in a nucleus are charge and spin independent. That is all the, all the particles interact each other only with their numbers. Therefore, nuclear interaction saturates. Okay. And there is, uh, and also one thing is, the energy of interaction is a continuous function of mass and hence number of nucleons. Okay, therefore, uh, the nucleons interact all, only, only with these numbers. Okay, and these nuclear interactions are charged and spin independent. Therefore, energy of interaction is a continuous function of mass and hence it is a uh, continuous function of number of nucleons. Okay, <clears throat> then we are going to discuss about what are the similarities between a nucleus and a liquid drop. The first point is, like the particles in a liquid drop, there are large number of particles. Okay, in, in, uh, in the case of a liquid drop, there are large number of molecules. Like that, in the case of a nucleus, there are large number of nucleons. That is the first similarity. And second one is, the nucleus is homogeneous and in, incompressible like the particles in a molecule. And that is the charge, density and all other properties of the nucleus are same throughout. Okay, throughout the drop and throughout the nucleus except at the surface boundaries. This implies that nuclear volume, uh, nuclear volume is proportional to mass that is proportional to A. Okay, uh, hence radius of the nucleus, that is nuclear volume is equal to, we can say uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube is proportional to A, therefore r is proportional to A raised to 1 by 3 or r is equal to a constant r0 into A raised to 1 by 3. That is nuclear radius is proportional to A raised to 1 by 3, r0 is a constant and its value is around 1.2 1.5 Fermi. And this is the expression you have studied in the, your lower classes. That is the nuclear radius R is equal to a constant R0 into A raised to 1 by 3. That is nuclear radius is proportional to 
മാസ് നമ്പർ റേസ് ടു വൺ ബൈ ത്രീ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ദി ഇൻ്ററാക്ഷണൽ എനർജി ഈസ് പ്രൊപ്പോർഷണൽ ടു എ ദ ഈസ് എ ന്യൂക്ലിയോൺ ഇൻ്ററാക്ട് ഓൺലി വിത്ത് ഇറ്റ്സ് നൈബേഴ്സ് ഓക്കെ ദർഫോർ ദർഫോർ ദ ഇൻ്ററാക്ഷണൽ എനർജി saturate interactional energy saturate therefore it is proportional to a that is if a nucleon interact with all other nucleon then the interactional energy will be proportional to a into a1 that is approximately equal to a square but actually in the binding energy curve you have drawn in the last classes that is binding energy per nucleon is is plotted against a we get a value around 8 a constant value around 8 that is binding energy per nucleon is proportional to a that means a nucleon interact only with its neighbors not with all the nucleon we know that nuclear interaction is short range one therefore only the neighbor nucleons can interact therefore interactional energy will be proportional to a not a square if if all the nucleons are interacting then it will be a into a a minus 1 then will be proportional to a square but actually we know that the interactional energy of the nucleon is proportional to a that is experimentally proven that means only the neighboring nucleons can interact like the molecules in a liquid drop and that is a another similarity and uh, energy level of the nucleus we are considering energy level of the nucleus as a whole okay like the energy levels of the nucleus of a liquid drop okay next is evaporation of liquids from the surface can be compared with the uh, emission of nucleons from the nucleus uh, in small energy reactions nucleons can be emitted from the uh, nucleus that that can be compared with the evaporation that is when a nucleus is absorbing a particular amount of energy this energy is distributed by all the nucleons very rapidly like the, the the if the energy is absorbed by a liquid drop the energy is spread by or shared by all the all the molecules like that if a nucleus absorb energy it share the all the energy into all the nucleons and it become a compound nucleus compound nucleus okay and this energy and this excess energy uh, can be lost by lose uh, emitting some nucleons like evaporation of liquid drops okay and the last one the splitting of a large liquid drop into smaller ones if i if you consider a, a, a very large uh, mer- drop of a mercury liquids mercury then by disturbing it will be split into smaller drops okay and like that a smaller droplets may combines to form a larger one and this is in similarity with nuclear fission and nuclear fusion in nuclear fission a bigger nucleus when disturbed by thermal nucleons or energy it will split into smaller ones like smaller nucleus may combine to form a larger one in all this process are exo energy energy is emitted in large amount and it is compared with the uh, liquid drop okay and these are the main similarities between a liquid drop and a nucleus so in this model developed by niels bohr we are considering nucleus as a liquid drop okay one of the main merits of liquid drop model are we can explain uh, nuclear behavior of nucleus in the excited state that is its uh, reaction thermal reaction is its nuclear fission nuclear fusion and these are the properties taking place in the excited state that can be very well explained by the liquid drop model Uh, whereas in the uh, shell model actually shell model is applicable only in the nucleus in the ground state but very liquid drop model can be applied nucleus in the excited state it provide mechanism for low energy nuclear reactions okay and nuclear fission and fusion can be explained very well explained by the liquid drop model compound nucleus theory uh, as as a result of the this liquid drop model and another important application of the liquid drop model is the binding energy calculation calculation of binding energy by 
a sand is called Wiesacker developed an equation based on the liquid drop model by statistical calculation to calculate the binding energy of the nucleus. That is a very important application of new uh, liquid drop model and we are going to discuss that equation, binding energy equation. Okay, calculation of binding energy and this equation is called a semi-empirical mass equation. Semi-empirical mass equation. As I told, this equation was developed by Weed Sacker. Okay, we know that the mass of an atom that is m z to a can be calculated as it is equal to um, z into mass of hydrogen plus uh, n into mass of neutron minus delta m. Okay, that is z is the number of protons into mass of proton that is mass of hydrogen is mass of proton actually so number of protons into mass of proton plus number of neutrons that is n into mass of neutron minus delta m and delta m we know this is the mass defect during the formation of the nucleus okay and we have studied that the binding energy is equal to uh, you have studied in the uh, in the basics of nuclear chemistry that it is equal to 931 into delta m million electron volt. So, if we know the binding energy, we'll, we will get the value of delta m. From this va value of delta, we can calculate the atomic mass or the nuclear mass, mass of the nucleus. Okay. So, <coughs> an semi-empirical mass equation was developed to calculate the binding energy, calculation of binding energy. Actually, in this equation, the binding energy is divided into five terms and the first term is BV and that is a volume term or volume energy. Second term is BS that is called the surface energy and the third term is uh, the pairing energy BP that is called the pairing energy and the fourth term is B asymmetric or asymmetric energy asymmetric energy and the last term is BP and that is pairing energy. So in this way the binding energy equation can be split into five separate equation or can be written as the sum of the five terms and that is first term is the volume term or volume energy BV, second term is surface energy, third term is pairing energy, fourth term is asymmetric energy and the last and fifth, fifth term is pairing energy. Okay, we are, uh, we, will, we will have to learn all these things in details and uh, the first term volume energy and this is the one of the main term or main positive contribution towards the binding energy, volume term is the it is due to the interaction between the nucleons. Okay, if you consider uh, two nucleons, a nucleus having only two nucleons, if they interact, suppose the binding energy is equal to U. So, binding energy per nucleon is equal to binding energy per nucleon is equal to U by 2. Okay. And if we consider a, a bigger nucleus or a nucleus having uh, uh, more number of nucleons, then a nucleon is surrounded by actually 12 nucleons. Okay, if you consider, you, you know that in solid state, a sphere, uh, or in the arrangement of spheres, the coordination number, that is number of uh, particles touched by a particular sphere is equal to 12. Okay. So, the binding energy of the central nucleon, central nucleon is equal to 12 binding energy of the central nucleon, binding energy per nucleon, central nucleon is equal to, the, we know that binding energy per nucleon is a single, for in the case of two nucleon or interaction between two particles is equal to u by 2. Okay, so interaction is 12, this is equal to 12 into u by 2, that is equal to 6u. 
Okay, that is binding energy per nucleon of the center nucleon is equal to 6u. And we know that all these nucleon touches other tall nucleons. Okay, therefore the binding energy per nucleon if there are a number of nucleons. We have a number of nucleons for a single nucleon at the center is equal to 6u. If there are a nucleon, then binding energy per nucleon, binding energy is equal to, uh, sorry, this is not binding energy per nucleon, binding energy for the central nucleus, nucleon is equal to 6u. So, the binding energy of a number of nucleons is equal to 6u into a. Okay, and we know that binding energy, the u is the interaction between two particles and that is a constant and 6 is a constant, so binding energy is proportional to A. So, the volume term, that is the main contribution due to the interaction between the nucleon, is equal to, we are written in this BV, it is proportional to A, or we can try it, BV is equal to a constant AV into A. Okay, and this is the main positive contribution towards the binding energy due to the interaction between the nucleon. And as we already uh, told you that, the nuclear, nucleon interaction saturate and it is proportional to number of nucleons. Therefore, BV is proportional to A or BV is equal to a constant AV into A. Okay, follow, can you follow me? And this value of AV is around, there are different values are there. Actually, we, you don't want to study all these values. Actually, its value is around 13.1 uh, million electron volt. Okay. And the next term is surface energy. Okay. And in the in the in the case of a nucleus at the core of the nucleus, we are considering all the particles are at the core, then it is surrounded by tall nucleons. But if we consider a nucleon at the surface, okay, in the center it is con there is interaction from all sides. Therefore, there are tall interaction. But in the surface, only half of interaction there is in the case of a molecule a particle in the or nucleon in the bulk of the nucleus. Therefore, as due to the surface uh, energy term, the binding energy will be less. Okay, we are considered in the first case, we are considered all particles are interacting with same number of nuclei, that is tall nucleon. But actually molecules in the surface, sorry, nucleons in the surface has less interaction. So, there is a negative term due to, sur due to the surface tension and it is proportional to surface area. So, the uh, surface energy term Vs is proportional surface area and we know that uh, surface area is equal to 4 pi r square and that is equal to 4 pi and we know that r is equal to r0 into a raised to 1 by 3. So, 4 pi into uh, r0 into a raised to 1 by 3 raised to 2. That is surface area is proportional to and these are all oral constants. It is proportional to a raised to 1 by 3 raised to 2. That is a raised to 2 by 3. So we can say surface energy term is proportional to that is more the surface area. Okay. Higher will be the surface energy. So we can write Bs is equal to it is a negative term because of surface uh, term binding energy decreases. That is higher the surface area lesser will be the binding energy. Okay, so it is a negative term, Bs is equal to minus a constant As into A raised to 2 by 3. Okay, and this is a second term, first term is volume term, that is a positive term, that is a main contribution to binding energy, that is equal to Av into A. Second term is due to surface tension or surface area, surface more particles in the surface are not interacting with as many particles as, the, as in the case of particles in the bulk of the nucleus. So, there is a lesser interaction uh, by the by the particles in the surface. So, their contribution will be less. So, we have to reduce that term that is Bs is equal to minus a constant As into A raised to 2 by 3. The value of constant As is around 14 million electron volt. And uh, the next term is Coulomb energy. Okay. Even though there is stronger attractive interaction between protons and protons, there is also repulsive interaction. But attractive interaction is higher, uh, almost uh, 100 times higher than the repulsive interaction between the proton in the, in the very close range or the short range. 
okay but there is a coulombic repulsion between the protons that is also contribute a negative terms to the binding energy due to the coulombic repulsion between the protons and this coulombic repulsion is a long range force not a short range one the attractive force between protons is a short range one but coulombic repulsion it is a coulombic interaction therefore this is not short range almost uh, uh, all the protons can interact can repel therefore there are if there are n uh, z proton if there are z proton then number of interaction between uh, that is n a, a particular proton can interact all all other protons therefore total number of interaction will be z into z minus 1 by 2 okay and coulombic energy we know that charge of a proton is equal to e okay that is if we do proton interact this energy is equal to e its energy also equal to e okay so total number of interactions is equal to z into z minus 1 by 2 because each proton can interact with all other proton because it is a uh, coulombic re repulsion therefore all the protons can interact therefore total number of repulsion is equal to z into z minus 1 by 2 into e square divided by the distance between two proton and all other protons we can take the average distance between the protons and actually that is proportional to uh, radius of the radius of the radius of the nucleus so e square divided by r so the coulomb term bc we can try and these are constant okay a constant a p into z into z minus 1 this e square is also a constant that is included that is absorbed in this constant so z into z minus 1 and this r is equal to we know that r in r 0 into a raised to 1 by 3 and this r 0 is constant also included in this constant therefore it is equal to z into z minus 1 divided by a raised to 1 by 3 and this value of a p is around 0 0.595 million electron volt okay and that is a coulombic term and the next term is asymmetric energy it is also a negative term. Oh, sorry uh, the, this term is also a negative term because coulombic repulsion due to the repulsion binding energy will decrease so it is also a negative term and next term is asymmetric energy asymmetric energy means we know that Okay, uh, asymmetric energy term, we have studied that um, if we plot n against p, n against p for stable nuclei, this is n by p is equal to 1, but actually the actual graph you see is look like this. Okay. That is uh, around uh, number of protons is equal to around 20. N by P ratio is equal to 1. Number of that is neutrons and protons are equal. But as the nucleus become more bigger or as the mass number increases, N by P ratio increases. That is there are more number of nucleons than protons. Okay. But actually the most stable condition is equal to Z is equal to N. That is number of protons and neutrons are equal. That is a stable condition. Because when protons and neutrons are equal, uh, we, are, we are applying the shell model here. The distribution of particles in these shells, in their shells is like this. So if there are 6 protons and 6 neutrons, okay, we know that in the shell model, neutrons and protons have separate shells. Okay, they are distributed like this. This is the most stable condition. But if the if n is greater than such, that is if we if we have uh, four protons and eight neutrons, and these neutrons are arranged in higher energy levels. Okay, and this will make higher energy contribution by the nucleons. Okay, and that will result the result in a decrease in binding energy okay and this is actually due to the asymmetric distribution of nu nucleons actually in the ideal condition when n equal to set like nucle nucleons and 
neutrons and protons and neutrons are distributed in the same energy levels. Okay, almost same energy level. So that is an ideal condition. But if there are more number of neutron, there is there is an excess neutron, there is an asymmetric distribution. That is, protons are actually in lower energy levels. Okay, or we can say uh, this was the ideal condition. Okay, if this uh, actually in this case there are six protons and six neutron. Here four protons and uh, eight neutron. We are considering uh, both of them are same number of a. That is ten. This is equal to 12a, this is also 12a. Okay, they are isobaric nucleus. But actually, this is in the ideal condition. In this case, we are converting two neutrons into sorry, two uh, protons into neutron. Okay, from this we are uh, converting two protons into neutron, then distribution become asymmetric. Okay, that will result in asymmetry and negative contribution to binding energy. And that will be proportional to that contribution to the binding energy that is we can say B asymmetric it is uh, proportional to difference in the protons and neutron that is equal to N minus Z okay or we can say it is equal to A minus 2Z okay because N is equal to A minus Z okay N is equal to uh, N we can write Okay, that is uh, n, n already we know this is equal to a minus z. Therefore, n minus z we can write a minus z minus z that is a minus 2z. So, this asymmetric term B asymmetric is proportional to this difference in or, or we can say the excess neutron, number of excess neutron that is equal to a minus 2z. Okay, actually by the calculation of this energy by converting these two protons into neutron. Actually, in this case, these two protons are converted into neutron. That is from the ideal case to the actual case. Okay. So, it is proportional to A minus 2 Z square. That is a calculation I am going to, uh, not going to uh, explain more details. Actually, equation become A minus 2 Z square into difference in between the energy levels. And this difference between the energy levels, actually it is proportional to difference between energy levels E. And this difference between energy level is inversely proportional to A. Because when A increases, that is when there is more number of nucleon, the packing or the difference between the energy levels will be less. Okay, but if there are lesser neutron, that is when A is less, the energy difference between the uh, energy levels are bigger. That is from the calculation of shell model. So Asymmetric energy B asymmetric is proportion is equal to a constant A asymmetric. Okay, A asymmetric into A minus 2 sets square divided by A. And that is asymmetric term. I am writing here that is B asymmetric is equal to a constant A asymmetric into A minus 2 set square divided by a or we can try a raised to minus 1. Okay, but here a minus 2z is the excess neutron. Okay, then the proton. Number of neutron higher than the proton, that is excess neutron and a minus 2z square into the difference between the energy level and this difference between the energy level is inversely proportional to mass number because for higher mass number, difference between energy levels will be or energy levels will be closely packed. So, difference decreases. So, it is inversely proportional to mass number. So, it is A raised to minus 1. And that is asymmetric term. And the last term that is pairing energy. And we have studied in the case of shell model that nucleus with the even Z and even N are more stable than nucleus with the even Z and odd n or odd z even n and which is more stable than odd z and odd n. Okay, we know that we have studied that out of the <coughs> 272 stable nucleus, <coughs> out of the 272 stable nucleus, 165 of them are even z even n type and about 55 are of 
even odd type either even set odd n or even n odd set like that and only four nuclei are of odd set and odd n okay and that indicates that there is a higher binding energy or higher uh, binding energy contribution in the case of even set and even n case that is that means even means there is a pairing even set even n means there is pairing between the nucleons so due to the pairing of nucleons there is a positive contribution to the binding energy and due to the unpairing of the nucleon or, or due to the uh, un, due to the presence of odd nucleons there is a negative contribution to binding energy okay but if one of them odd we can cancel it if one either even set odd n type or odd z even type even n type one is n one is even one other is odd therefore they are cancelled so in the case of even set even n type there is a positive contribution to the binding energy and odd z odd n type there is negative contribution to binding energy and even odd type there is no contribution so the pairing energy term we can write bp is equal to plus minus zero plus minus zero a constant a p into here also this energy is proportional to inversely proportional to a a raised to minus one that is calculation from experiment experimental calculation shows that this pairing energy actually this pairing energy between the nucleons is proportional to 2j plus 1 divided by a okay that is a calculation from the uh, shell model so pairing energy bp is equal to plus minus 0 ap into a raised to minus 1 here this plus is for the even set even n type positive contribution minus is for odd set odd n type negative contribution 0 is for even set odd n or odd z even n type okay so we get all the terms so we can write the total binding energy be is equal to ev plus es plus ee plus ea plus ep and that is equal to binding energy semi empirical mass equation completely we can write be is equal to what was the volume term volume term is equal to av into a next is surface term aes and that is equal to that is a minus term that is minus as into a raised to 2 by 3 a raised to 2 by 3 next is uh, the coulombic repulsion or the uh, uh, proton proton repulsion term that is equal to minus that is also minus that is a okay that is a c into z into z minus 1 in divided by a raised to 1 by 3 or a raised to minus 1 by 3 next is asymmetric term asymmetric term is equal to uh, that is also minus term minus a asymmetric into a minus 2 set square a raised to minus 1 and the last pairing term that is equal to plus minus 0 um, that is a p into a raised to minus 1 and this equation is called a semi empirical mass equation semi empirical mass equation okay so it's very simple that is we are considering in the liquid drop model we are considering the nucleus the nucleus as a liquid drop first we have discussed about the, what are the similarities between a nucleus and the liquid drop and the liquid drop model mainly used to, in the case of nucleus in the excited state we can very well explain the nuclear reactions nuclear fusion and nuclear fission using this theory and also this theory can be used to calculate binding energy semi empirical mass equation okay in semi empirical mass equation we have divided into five terms that is volume term that is the main positive contribution next is surface energy term next is coulombic term and asymmetric term and pairing term okay you have to uh, read the textbook well and notes well and understand uh, the idea more more okay thank you